Almost every single one of us has told a white lie before, but what about when it comes to pathological lying? Imagine if something traumatic happened to you in your life and you have a friend claiming the same thing happened when it didn't. We will talk about this, but also a story in which a child pretty much faked DID as a child without even realizing what it was. They didn't have access to the internet. And that can kind of give us an idea of the psychology of why people fake today. So make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and let's get into the video. <laughs> Title explains almost all. This is a person I used to associate with. They know I have had some events in my life where hearing that someone I know had committed would get a rise out of me. I won't trauma dump about it, but it's not the point. It's where one day she sent me a text pretending to be her father about a month ago and said, today, friend, unalived herself, and you were on the list of people she wanted me to text. I was suspicious as this girl had lied about multiple different illnesses, both physical and mental. But now, a month later, she texted me saying she was just depressed from her non-existent carriage, proven that she lied about it too, and had a manic episode. This is the length that fakers will go, it seems. Even ones that were once close to me. The text reads, sorry, when was that message sent? I had a manic episode. OP said, what happened? Why would you send me something like that a couple months back when it's not true? You know, I cared about you and I think it's disrespectful. The friend said, I had zero control. I was off, not in a good place. I hope you're not mad. OP says, you know that my mother passed from unalive. They said, no. I also was and still is depressed because I had a marriage. Pathological lying or pseudological pathanstesia. I definitely pronounced it wrong, but the point is that it's a very complex psychological phenomenon. Does faking a pregnancy and claiming that you unalived yourself make you automatically a pathological liar? Not necessarily. I mean, especially since this person is a teenager. Although it is a psychological phenomenon characterized by repeated and habitual lying. Pathological lying can stem from various underlying motives, including a desire for attention, validation, control, or escape from consequences. Individuals may fabricate elaborate stories or falsehoods to fulfill emotional needs, manipulate others, or to avoid facing uncomfortable truths or responsibilities. Pathological lying is often characterized by an impulse or a compulsion to deceive others. If someone is a pathological liar, they might not calculate the potential consequences to their actions. The lying might feel irresistible that leads to a pattern of deception. Some pathological liars may construct and maintain false identities or narratives as a means of shaping their self-image and coping with feelings of inadequacy and insecurity. If you come up with these fantastical things about yourself, I mean, in this situation, they're definitely not fantastical, but you can still get this attention and validation that you crave quite easily, it seems. Pathological lying is frequently associated with the need for attention and validation from others. You might engage in deceptive behavior to garner sympathy, admiration, or special treatment. But sometimes pathological lying might even be rooted in a disconnection between reality and fantasy. In some of these famous pathological liar cases, you can see them literally, like what was it, Dirty John? Like, they will continue to lie up until the point where they can't lie anymore. Like you're about to get married and go on this cruise and you have all this money and you will wait until the day before and you'll try to just keep coming up with things. If you are a pathological liar, you might struggle to feel empathy or remorse for others because for a lot of us lying, it doesn't feel good. And for this person, I don't know, maybe it could be as disturbing to the point where they saw the attention that this person got from this extremely traumatic life event and they want it too? I don't know. It might even be in your best interest in this case to block this person out of your life if they don't seem to be interested in any change or honesty. Using unalive as a manipulation tool is a new level of I can't find the right word without being offensive, but it's very bad. It takes a lot of indifference to hurt the people that live with you, but basically also to demean every human who has ever struggled with genuine unalive ideation. Empathy and mental illness aside, this can actually leverage some of people's deepest fears for your own satisfaction. If you have ever dealt with unalive ideation, if you ever even did get attention for it, you probably didn't want it at the time, but 
but to imagine that someone else is sitting there and wishing they had that attention, I mean, it is sad that they aren't able to get that attention in their day-to-day -day life, but definitely too OP. I don't know even how to end this. I'm so sorry that this happened to you. preface, when I was younger, like seven to eight years old, I too would do similar things that these DID people are doing. Granted, this was before DID was a thing and I didn't have any online accounts. I would make OCs, original characters, and roleplay them during recess with my friends. And it looks quite similar to what these kids are doing today. I would introduce myself, then my OC, and talk about them. Then I would switch and be them for a while. I would close my eyes, wait, and boom, a new person. I would change my speech, walk, and whatever to continue. This. There was a character who wouldn't walk well on their own, so I would drag my feet and my friends would help me move around. My friends didn't mind. They thought it was strange, but they didn't bully or harass me for it. I was just bored. I always knew that none of this was real, but again, I was bored. For those friends that really played into it, they would address me via whoever I was. When I switched back into myself, they would fill me in on what happened during that time. Eventually, I grew out of it and yada yada. But I honestly think the majority, if not all of these these people are just bored and want to talk about their character or characters they like. With the day of the internet, they also realize that not only will they gain population, but also be able to surround themselves with like-minded people. I really hope that they'll be able to grow out of this or just join a local LARPing or D&D group. So I found this story particularly interesting because, I don't know, when I was a kid, I definitely pretended to be someone else. You know, it's like you're playing a game. However, it is so interesting how almost identical this is to individuals who might fake DID nowadays. I say this in literally every one of my videos, but mental illness can be incredibly debilitating and horrible to live with. And when you are faking it, it's... It's a new level. I've said this before, but I'm not saying that if you are faking, you are a bad person. I mean, it kind of depends, right? Because it's like, it can either be on the spectrum of it's unhealthy for yourself because you're faking and you know, it's a maladaptive coping skill all the way to if you are like a social media influencer spreading misinformation. I mean, people nowadays, they role play all the time. They have OCs. I can't for the life of me remember what it's called when you role play in Minecraft, but you know what I'm talking about. When kids role play innocently, it can actually cause growth and character development. I mean, kids play in imaginary circumstances all the time. This can actually be a healthy outlet for creative expression. But when you're all grown up and you're blurring the lines between what is fantasy and what is real, it can actually have an impact on your mental health. In a lot of role-playing groups, there is this thing where it's like, when you're in character, you're in character, and when you're out, you're out. And I guess when these tweens or teens nowadays kind of want to do this role-playing, they might see DID and think that is a step up because you are not role playing these people. People will genuinely believe that I am this character. But unfortunately at first might not realize, might forget, or unfortunately just not care about the implications it can have on people with genuine dissociative disorders. Maybe you might be embarrassed. I don't know, because when I was a teenager, I was definitely like qu quirky. I don't know how else to describe it, but you know that, you know that what I'm talking about. And so when I'm role playing with my friends, I could imagine like, you know, the popular kids might not think that that is the coolest thing in the world. I mean, I graduated in 2019 though. If people would accept that they like role-playing, having imaginary friends or crushes on your OCs in characters in fictional media, or making an imaginary world in your head even as an adult, there's nothing or cringy or wrong about that. It's harmless as long as you're doing what makes you happy and not spreading misinformation. I don't know, in today's day and age, a lot of people are told to just grow up and maybe a lot of people might turn to maladaptive coping skills such as faking. But yeah, I really, really wanna know what you guys have to think about this because I think it is insane how these people would even go down to the point of like, faking or role-playing amnesia um, with, I don't know, it's so interesting. So yeah, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, turn the bell in if you're feeling risky, and comment below your opinion on either of these stories. Thank you so much, it helps with the algorithm. Also, thank you so much to each and every one of my members. I appreciate the support on my channel very much, and to everyone, have a good day, night, whatever the case may be, and peace out.